Today, the ever-growing supermarkets and superstores sell everything. They're selling clothes, they're selling insurance, they're selling pensions. You can pick up everything you want in one place. It's convenient, it's just easy. But our love affair with the big boys is killing Britain's small shops. We're sacrificing our greengrocers, our bakers, our high streets, our communities for convenience. We'll miss our neighbourhood shops when they're gone. And I don't want to live in a Britain that bland. I made my name in high-end designer retail, but now I'm heading into a whole new world to work out a survival plan for our local shopkeepers. This week, I'm taking on the most endangered of all, the greengrocer. It takes more than a we can do anything, a we've got the bluster. And I'm facing three feisty sisters who are clueless. Is it ku Kumar Kumari? Tomatoes. Honestly, you two are coming in at a couple of airheads. Prickly. You're giving us a tongue lashing now, Mary. You don't talk to me like that. I'm not some idiot. And think they know best. If it's coming into my house, I tell you what I want. But you don't know it. Darling, you don't know it. What is more important, Dan? Your business with your sister. Or do you know what? I'm sick of looking like a bloody villain on these. You're sort not, of Dan. Jesus! Oi! Five thousand small shops closed last year. The most traditional British stores are just disappearing from our high streets. But they hold a special place in my heart. When my mother died, when I was 16, I remember having to do the shop. And I can't tell you, I'd go into the greengrocer and he knew what to give me. <laughs> he knew what my mother bought. And they became like an extended part of my family. To lose that off our high street today would just be just awful. I'm hoping to breathe new life into them. And today I'm heading to a struggling greengrocer in the heart of Merseyside. Hoy Lake is a prosperous town full of families and the comfortably retired. Foster's is their last surviving greengrocer. You want me to order more potatoes? No. You don't want me to order no more potatoes? No more. It's a family affair owned by sisters Debbie and Anne. Until they bought the shop a year ago, they knew nothing about fruit and veg. I'm looking for the right names for them lettuce that we bought at market this morning. And for life, I can't remember which one was which. It makes it look a bit thick, doesn't it, if I don't know the name of the lettuce? The sisters still have a lot to learn. Get some of the, the dark tomatoes. Is it Kumar, Kumari? Basically walked into this blind. Despite spending £20,000 and Debbie's life savings to buy the shop, it's far from bountiful. Sales have plummeted. Two ounces of mushrooms, please. That'll give you three mushrooms. The most difficult thing about owning a shop? Not making enough money. <laughs> but Debbie remains philosophical. Taking a gamble. Yeah. But if you don't take gambles, then... then sometimes you just, life just passes you by, doesn't it? And you won't, and you'll never, you'll never know. I mean, there doesn't seem to be a shortage of dosh around here. Every year we spend £8 billion on fruit and veg. And before I even get to Foster's, I've spotted one of the most popular places to buy your five a day. Here's the Sainsbury's local. 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. Yeah, fantastic. It's that kind of competition that has halved the number of greengrocers in the last decade. Where are they? Hey, give me five minutes. I'm trying to find a shop. There they are, Foster's. Foster's. You've got to really want to come down and find Foster's. I hope this is going to be worth the drive. At the tail end of the street is the shop I'll spend the next month working with. I mean, it's a bog standard fruit and veg shop that. <sighs> How long has that been sitting out there? It's just off. Fruit. It's just wrong. Especially outside. Anyone can pick that up and squeeze it. It's wrong. Any excitement I was feeling this morning has just evaporated. I can only hope I'll find some life inside. Manning the tills is Jen, Debbie and Anne's elder sister. She's left holding the fort whilst her sisters do other part-time jobs. Hello. Hello, Mary. 
Hi, Jennifer. Nice to meet you. And you too. All right. The <laughs> yes. sun's shone for us today. Lovely. Have you been busy? No. Well, let me have, let me have a walk round. A great greengrocer is about freshness and plenty. Someone needs to tell Fosters. The thing about empty boxes, Jennifer, is it never looks like all they've sold out is in this fabulous. It just looks sad. Do you not sell many, Marius? No, no. How long has that been there? About two weeks. They look like an illness, Jennifer. I agree. Jennifer knows it wasn't always like this. Before her sisters bought it, Foster's was actually owned by her husband's family for 115 years. Is this as good as when your husband was running it? No. He used to go on the market five days a week, and they only go three. Like, Paul would go for, say, 3.30. 3.30 in the morning? Yeah. And if 3.30 they don't... in the morning, well, and what time are they going at? Probably six, well... And have you said to them you should go at 3.30? Well, yep. And what do they say? They said there's no need to go that early. No wonder Jen seems deflated. Her sisters are throwing 115 years of tradition just down the drain. This makes me... It makes me sad. I'm a little bit angry. I'll have to meet these girls. I want to know why they bought this and what they're doing with it. <laughs> what are they doing with this? The sisters arrive mid-afternoon. Nice to meet you. You too. I'm Debbie. Hi, Debbie. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Hi, Alan. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. And you. Wow. Your kingdom. I know. Yes. What do you think? <laughs> hmm. Mm. Well, we're tired, aren't we? We've taken over an old shop, basically, haven't we? What do you think? Yeah. And now we need you to come in, and... don't we? We need your expertise, Mary. But why did you buy it? Did you? What was your business plan when you did the negotiation? To be honest, there's another business plan. We <laughs> thought we could do anything, yeah. me and her. We can do this, and especially with our gens up, we could do it. Yeah. Thing is, it takes more than a. We can do anything, a. We've got the bluster. It's got to take focus. It's got to take vision. Yeah. You've got to have a business plan, and you've got to follow it. If you were a customer coming in here, it just let me just walk you through. Just, just would you look at this and think, fantastic. This is great. This looks great. Well, like, yeah, I do like it. Honestly, yeah. honestly, three packs of beetroot, half empty, crack at the back. That's the reason we got in touch with you and you were going to come in and you... Because and we've seen we've seen the stuff you've done before and we were hoping you were going to do Eleanor. It's not down to me, it's you. Do you I know, know what I mean? I know, it's not we, down to me. I know, but you're giving us a tongue lashing now, Mary. You really are. <laughs> Am I? Yes, you are. Do you know what? I could come in and say lovely and walk out. We knew... It ain't good enough. We haven't got the know-how. We thought we were going to come into this and learn as we went along. We've learnt a little bit, but we've not learnt enough. How do we go about being this businesswoman that's going to make this thing turn around? Well, I've got to go away and work this one out. But I'll tell you this, it's not going to be just down to me. So don't think I'm coming in with a wand or a stick of celery, cos I'm not. That is just... that is bonkers. They think just a bit of kind of balls, the yeah, we can do attitude makes a business. And just they're in for a big shock a big shock because that is just slowly, slowly dying on its feet. And they think, I'm going to just come in and go, the future. But the wake-up call hasn't gone down well. I feel whipped. I feel like, I you know, what I'm doing, everything I'm doing is bloody well wrong. Debs is not the only one feeling deflated. I was really looking forward to the challenge of reinventing a fruit and veg shop but they are really going to have to put the work in with me. By the time I get home and meet my business partner, Peter, I'm wondering what on earth I've taken on. So none of them is a greengrocer? Oh, you're having a laugh. One's a postwoman, the other one works in care, <laughs> and the other one thinks she wants to go and be in care. But if none of them are bothered about fruit and veg, yeah? Peter, they don't know their fruit and veg. <laughs> I know more about that than I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to God, they don't know the fruit and veg. That's shocking, isn't it? That is shocking. A few days later, and there's been some major developments up in Merseyside. I've had to come back up um, a day earlier than I expected because I hear that the, uh, the two women, particularly um, Debbie and Anne, were really upset after my visit. I do not feel that I was really particularly tough on the women because... I have to find out whether they're serious and 
and my meeting with them just seemed like this was a bit of fun oh we'll buy this and you know we've got the drive but little else I thought she was a bit brutal a bit too brutal I think there's ways of getting your point over without being rude I'm certainly not going to go through that again to be ripped to pieces you know if we are doing things wrong there's, there's different ways of sort of telling somebody that they're doing things wrong if they're wobbling already I worry about their staying power Good. How's yourself? Good. Very good. Jolly good. I hear you didn't want me to come back. Yes, that's right. Yeah, because you upset me. You were brutal. Absolutely brutal. No. Don't you remember? I had to find out whether you were serious. But a lot of people ha believed that, they, you know, ultimately they'd love a nice shop or a nice restaurant because, you know, I'm interested in shopping or I'm interested in food. And the difference between making a business and a profitable, successful business is someone who is willing to commit the time and the energy. And now, that is being honest with you. And if honest with you means that I'm going to offend you, I will apologise now. I don't mean to offend you, but I actually do need to work out what I'm going to do with this business, and I need to know that I've got these incredible soldiers there with me. Well, that's fair enough. OK. Yeah. So, shall we start? Again. 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 <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> With the ceasefire called, we're going behind enemy lines into the nearby supermarkets to track down the locals. For independence to survive, they must steer these kind of shoppers into their stores. The sisters need to know why Foster's is being ignored. Do you always shop Sainsbury's for your fruit and veg? We do. You do? Yeah. Why is that? Because we only live around the corner. Do you know that Foster's, these ladies have a shop called Foster's mm -hmm. on the road? I don't go down that far. It's quite heavy when you're buying fruit, yeah. veg, potato. You don't shop Foster's. Can I ask I, you... I don't. Why? The design of the shop is not terribly attractive. So how often would you shop with Foster's? It's they difficult like for them to get stuff that's really fresh. And the bad news just keeps on coming. OK. Do you live locally? Yes. Would you ever consider shopping at Foster's fruit and veg shop? Oh, it's too far away. <laughs> is it? Shops like Foster's, that's just fruit and veg. OK. You, you go into a supermarket, it's got everything in it. OK, and why would you not shop Foster's? Well, I have to say, I went in yesterday. It looked very jaded. A lot of the um, containers were empty. The ones that did have things had one or two things in. I wouldn't have bought any of the things that were there. I felt they were really yes, sell-by date. They didn't look They're not inviting. sell by date. We've been to the market look, every day. Inviting. They didn't, they didn't look, look inviting at all. They certainly weren't. They were, they, there's certainly no sell by date. Because there was nothing that said to me, pick that up. First of all, you need to make it more inviting. Yes. If it's more we, inviting I and, it, and I want to come in the shop, I agree then I will that. do it. Yeah. If the price is right, and I don't mind. This it. shopper is spot on, but Anne doesn't think the customer knows best. She is out to, to just come out and bad mouth. That, that was what her aim was. She's, but the thing is, Anne, I thought you were about to slap her in the face. Oh, no, 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 she would never do that. Oh, I felt quite what's the name with she her. Did. She did. Yeah, she was, she was very rude. Just to say that it's not fresh stuff. You know, I know it's fresh. The thing is, at the end of the day, that's their comments, OK? That is what they think, mm. yeah. right? They are shopping elsewhere. Whether Anne will accept it or not, we need to come up with a way of making Foster's more appealing, more convenient and altogether more special than the local supermarkets. The first step in reinventing this greengrocer is to overhaul their awful stock. So, I need to know their budget. How do you work out your finances for your buy? Well, what, what you're asking? She has to do... How do you work out your buy? When we, when we come back? No, how do you work out how much you are spending per buy, how much your margins are, and then how much your profitability is? Well, don't we just work... work we just do a list of what we need. She goes to market, buys exactly what we need for the shop, and that's how we carry on. So you've never worked out what your buy is, what your regular margins are? No. OK. I am shocked. Did you not even think, hang on a minute, I'm going into retail, buying and selling, I will go and find out a bit? No. What's your turn every week? I don't know, it's all in the books. It's all in the books. 
Well, show me the books then. Let's look at the books. This isn't business. These two just seem to be playing at shop. I've got float, which means the cash that's in the till, OK, that you're starting the day with. Yes. So that's the, the float next day. that there's going to be left that's for the, the next day. That's the cash that you've talked How, when you look at the end of this, do you judge a good day or a week? You um, don't? No. You, you, well, you know, if you, I mean, you can go... You just go by, like, basically from, from one week to the next. If there, what there is, is here, is, look, there is no consistency. There's no clear book. Well, that is when you start to run this business properly, when you have that knowledge. At the moment, honestly, honestly, you two are coming in like a couple of airheads. But we're not airheads. Everything you do from now on will be based on is this financially viable for my business? Every decision, OK? So that's what we've got to do next. And we will do that. Good. OK? We will do that. Good. On one hand, I feel a kind of desperate responsibility for them that these girls have paid a lot for this business. A lot. And to be so naive. We've been going out for over a year. We've managed to muddle along this far. If now we're going to be educated, then it can only get better, can't it? No, I just don't know whether they're going to be able to do it. I hope they will. I really, really hope they're going to go out and start coming back with an energy. Um, but I'm not holding my breath. Two days later, and I'm moving ahead with a plan to get some great special produce into Foster's. And I'm about to find out if Debs and Anne are as committed to this business as they claim to be. I've just arrived at Liverpool Wholesale Market. It serves hundreds of greengrocers from all over the North, West and Wales. And I've arranged to meet Anne and Debs at 5am. I can't remember the last time I was up having to work at this hour. And it is a really, really early start. And most greengrocers started their day hours ago. The women should be getting here at this hour, where I'm seeing an awful lot of greengrocers already packing up and filling their vans. So where am I not-so-dynamic duo? This is hardly the new energetic commitment they promised me. Oh, and there's Anne. That's like an hour after I got here. That's Mary! Morning. 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 I know. You said you'd be here at 5 a.m. I... I... We have. We've been here. We've been wandering round. It was lost, mate. I've taken... Stop it. You're such a little... You pull the wool over I've my eyes. Now, but I am being told time and time again by all those ones who come here early, get in and you get the best deals. No, you don't. OK, so those blokes with 40 years' experience are talking out of there. No, not, no, no, Not no, saying no, that. You're no. saying that no. this is not just all come in this morning. No, 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 but they're telling me, getting earlier, they, they believe they get a better deal and they get the better pick and choice. No. Do you agree with that? I would say, if it was me, I'd come earlier. Yeah, yeah. what time would you get here? If it was me, it'd be 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. You get a better selection, I would yeah. say that. Generally, at that time of morning, we'd have something we could probably... Do a deal. Do a deal for them, yeah. Get in at 4 a.m. and do your deal. <laughs> but this isn't just about getting the sisters to wake up to their responsibilities. I have a plan to do what the supermarkets don't. I want half of Foster's produce to be locally grown. I reckon you need to try and achieve as much as possible where you can locally. Yeah. It's a point of difference. The supermarkets can't do that as local yeah. as you can. Sales of local produce have gone up by a third in the last five years alone. I want them to get hold of the best. But they should be going around every one of these and searching, 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 and then editing and making their choice. And while the sisters start their buy, I do my own bit of research. Are you a... Uh... A local producer? Yes. Well, we've come from Haskett's Bank. Do you? Yes. And what do you kind of specialise in? Well, salad stuff mainly. What stuff? Salad. Oh, salad. Sorry, I thought you said salad. I mean, you really have a brilliant selection. Do you know the girls from Foster's, the two women? No. No, I don't know. They don't come no, in? No, no. Anne and Deb? I've never seen them round the market, to be quite truthful. Well, that's no surprise. Half an hour later, and the sisters have talked to just one man, their usual supplier. Hi, girls. 
Is it? What are you buying here? Lettuce? Yeah. Um, this is our Graham. This is Graham. Oh, our Graham. Mary. Our oh, Graham. Yeah, our Graham. He looks, he looks after us. He's very good. Is it all local, your stuff? A lot of it's local, not uh, everything. Obviously, a bit of it's important this time of year. Leeks, local leeks, yeah. Royal leeks. Yeah. Well, that is uh, icebergs, that's all local stuff we have. Okay. That's why we come to them. Just, just out of interest, the, the, you've been coming here regularly to him, yeah? Yes. Have you, have you looked at others? Yes. Prescott's, he's, he does a lot of his own stuff. But have you done everyone in here and looked and... Well, I think you, you get used to the certain people. But I do think there might be some others that will do a great deal and might have better stuff. I mean, these are, these are good. Yeah, but how do you know if you don't know how to compare? Well, because we do use Prescott's. That's two names. So instead of going, you know, Groundhog Day to yeah. the same places, it's just look round and make your own opinions. If Anne insists in staying in the same old rut, fosters can never develop. Can I just show you one that I found that I just really like? <laughs> I've been quite inspired by Luckily, Deb seems more receptive. I think they look lovely, don't you? Those well, we're, just, we're just sorting out now. We're gonna, cause, because obviously people aren't used to buying this from, from our shop. I know. So I what know. we're going to do is we're going to do a deal with this lady and we're going to have a mixed box sorted. So oh, that's got, brilliant. And we can make a nice, nice display of them on the front yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. What's the damage? Oh, you can have that. So I'll give you that. Well, for starters. We'll be back. We'll be back. At last, our first small step forward. Fosters have something special, unique and different from the supermarkets. Back at the shop, they need to get the produce onto the shelf and get it sold. I want to know what these lettuces yeah. are called. I want to know where they're from. Yeah. Normally would put what, what it is. And... No, what you normally do is you say chilies 120. Yeah. Santana Rosa plums, £2.50. Golden plums. I'm asked, you yeah. don't put lettuce. I want to know local, where it's from, what it's called, and what the price is. Yeah. Start to think like yeah. a retailer. We're not doing as well as Mary would like us to do. She's, she is driven, she is focused. She's a planner, isn't she? Me, I'm more jumping feet first and then have a go. But I'm being educated. And if I learn something out of this, then that's okay with me. We're all on a learning curve every day. As I move on to the next part of my plan for their business, Debbie and Anne's learning curve will get a whole lot steeper. There's never been a better time to sell fruit and veg. We're spending more on our five a day than ever. And I've got an idea that should give Fosters a whole new revenue stream. To reveal all, I've brought them down to London to a little corner shop I know in Knightsbridge. We're going in Harrods. <laughs> wow! Oh my lord! I didn't know they sold for a virgin here. Morning. Morning, welcome to Harrods. I'm Paul. Nice I'm Debbie. You. Hi, Debbie. I've arranged Morning. for them to meet Paul Hi. Thomas, who runs the Harrods Food Halls. Harrods started out 150 years ago as a greengrocer with a staff of only two. A bit like Foster's. Oh my god! <laughs> Their six enormous food halls sell everything from apples and pears to mangosteen and rambutan and pull in 15 million shoppers a year, unlike Foster's. The price of asparagus hits how much? £5.50 a bunch. Oh, I think we can do cheaper. <laughs> White t-shirt. To get a flavour of what I think Foster's can do, I've arranged for the girls to undertake a little work experience. Well, I never. There they are, oh. looking every bit the part. Look at you! <laughs> <laughs> Get it's you with the glasses under the hat on the top of the head and hers <laughs> on top of the head. <laughs> what do you that. look like? <laughs> You're like, ah, 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 yeah. Even Harrods knows that in the 21st century, having this gorgeous shop isn't enough. Harrods not only sell from this store, but they go the extra mile. They choose the best produce and deliver a veg box to your door. Something an independent greengrocer can do just as easily. And I want the sisters to get a taste of how they do it here. You've met Paul, haven't you? Yeah. He's got a job for you. Okay, we've got an order for you, it's come through. Right. Uh, it's for a seasonal veg box to feed a family of four people for a week. 
Right. And you've got to make it up. No, truthfully, this is what, honestly, you have to learn because you need to get outside of the shop and deliver to the customer. The biggest thing that you are up against, funnily enough, is not price or your freshness, it's convenience. And this is the ultimate convenience, right? OK. Yeah, yeah. Where's their workstation, Paul? Over here. You always look worried, Anne, and she's always the one laughing, going, yeah, no problem, no problem. What are the most important things that they have to think about? Uh, they've got to think, obviously, about the price. Yeah. To make sure they get the right uh, amount in there. If they put too much in, they're not making any profit. Yeah. They've got to make sure they're putting in some staples. Veg is vibrant, so you need to have some nice vibrant colours in there to make it look appealing too. Veg box delivery schemes are worth £170 million a year. I think it's a great way for independents to do battle with the supermarkets. And this veg box is exactly what the sisters need to offer the people of Hoylake. Savoy, £4.25 each. Except, of course, a bit cheaper. This is the next stage. They can answer convenience, they can really answer the freshness, seasonal vegetables that they have in, and they can start to make a decent profit. We're going to need some salad. We'll make up a salad. No, 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 it's only veg. It's a veg box. Oh, Lord help us. I'm hoping that they are really thinking about this family of four and what they'd be cooking during the week. Carrots, collie. Collie. Broccoli. And then layered with some really good seasonal ones. It's about, oh, what's the surprise? What is it, what's the greengrocer put in to my box this week? How about sweet corn? When people get this on their door, so it feels like something really special arriving. How are you getting on, girls? Talk me through well, the week at my house for dinner, right? Okay. You're feeding me. Um, family of four. Did we say family, family of four? four? Yeah. That's me. You could, uh, you could have your, your Sunday... You could either use these for a Sunday roast. Right. You write your veg, so it's your meat, three and three veg. Mashed carrots with them, even. You could do stuffed aubergine, um, jacket potato. Just to, um... Probably have to... And probably have listen to up, you're going, looking like really bored on me. Are you bored? I just don't see what this is all to do with it. <laughs> I really don't. Just you do not see yeah. what this has to do with your business? Well, I just don't see what it is, you know. Well, if somebody, if somebody's put in an order, they'd tell you what they wanted, wouldn't they? No. No, they no, no, they, they don't. Are you not listening? Are you not opening I your am mind? Listening. Well, how do you know that they like this stuff? But that's up to you to work out as a specialist greengrocer for you to actually be giving them advice. Well, but I, I just thought the general thing would be people would tell you what they wanted. But you don't know it, darling. You don't know it. And you're closing your ears and looking bored stiff. Mm. I just don't see it, no. If, I, I would need to know aubergine. Don't like them. But if that is really seasonal and they trust your taste level, that you're putting in the right veg, you have to think in that way. You don't talk to me like that. That's, you know. Anne is closing her mind. And I find this quite a few times. It's really frustrating. I know best. You don't know best. You don't know best. I've learned a lot from coming here today. A lot. I have loved it. She hasn't loved it as much as I have. <laughs> no, I don't like that attitude of somebody speaking to me and going, well, don't you open your mind up, don't you know? Anne's quite childlike and um, stamps her feet. Deb's got an open mind on everything and um, she's got the energy and the passion and that's the one I just think actually has to lead this business. With one sister behind me, I'm pressing ahead with my idea to deliver veg boxes to Hoylake. That's 160. We need to get out there and trawl the streets and I have just the thing to get us noticed. Turned out nice again. Okay, so this is going to be our little van. Yeah. Then we're going to have our little boxes that we're going to fill. Little aprons. Oh, she's yeah. Lovely. You went with the Harrods green. Yeah. You pinched them from Harrods. No, I didn't pinch I them didn't. from Harrods. That's nice, isn't it? 
and uh, we're going to go out and we're going to um, get some business. We're going to knock on doors, we're going to speak to people, and we're going to say to them, would you buy one of our boxes? And we're going to sell, sell, sell. I've also made an important decision about Foster's future. I do think you need someone who's managing the daily business, OK? I really do, who becomes the person who's saying, right, OK, here's our goals, this is what our objectives for the day are, because at the moment, everybody's got a little bit of a say. And I think, Deb, you should manage this do business, think, yeah. I, 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 do you think me? I, I thought our journey would be better. Did you? you? You've bought the business. Yeah, yeah. Because I think you actually have a natural talent for that, Deb. Hidden talent, I have. She's got the gift of the gab, hasn't she? <laughs> yeah, no. You've all got the flipping gift of the gab, <laughs> let me tell you that. I tell you what, I couldn't get a word in anyways after time. <laughs> <laughs> OK? Debbie's first task as manager is to get together a sample box so we have something to show potential customers. Meanwhile, I'm in the back working on the promotion to pull together just a little mailer or something that we can leave at the doors to tell them what we're doing. So really this will be the first time actually that we're getting the message out what we're doing and what we're standing for. The boxes will sell at eight pounds but cost only four pounds to make. It's a small profit but if lots of people sign up it's guaranteed money in the till and a great way to promote Fosters. The exercise is to say right this is this is what we can provide. We can provide you with a box. It wouldn't work. We can... <laughs> You're talking through your ass. Um, that wouldn't work. Oh, don't let Mary hear you say We've that. Been there, Jen. No, people get on the phone and they order. You yeah. just go giving people stuff that they don't want. Just, you just can't go around guessing about what people want, you know. No, no she said it was expertise. No, That's no, I, no. I, I agree with you. No, I agree with you. Here we go again. Uh, let me tell you something. We've got to sort out whether you're on board with me on the vision of this business or not. If you're not on board with me, let, really and honestly now, tell me, tell me, tell me now. Uh, I didn't agree with the boxes. OK, you don't agree with the boxes? No. Because no. that wouldn't work. OK, we'll go on to that. So no, no working on your delivery. You don't think delivery's going to no, work? No, yes, 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 we do. We can't see. Pre-making up boxes and then waiting for the phone to go and they... No, not wait for the phone to go. No one waits for the phone to go. You know, in business, you have to be proactive. There's no waiting for a phone to go, Deb. Got There's going out, marketing it, telling people, going to the doors, this is what we do. It does sound a marvellous way of doing it, if it works. If that would work. Well, you know what? We haven't got many options. What about if there was a family? Six in a family? Yeah, two so in a family. They buy a bigger box. Deb's sisters are holding this idea back. I need to get out and show them this works. It is a bit like pulling teeth. They don't understand the implications of how much this will improve their business. They just don't get that. Got to make these delivery boxes work. And then Anne shows us all just how little commitment she's got to making a go of this business. Her other part-time job is apparently more important. I can only come for 10 minutes. I've got to go. That's what I've well, said. you've got to go. This is the most important I bit. I know, but I Jennifer thought... can go with you. I... Look, I can't. I've taken two days off. Okay. I'm, you know, I'm on the skin of my teeth. Right, I'm coming Jenny. back. I know. Me and Jenny will flog She'd this. She'd only give me time to take all my holidays and I can't... Me know. and Jenny will flog this. Come on, Mary. This is just annoying me. I've booked this in advance. This is our big drive to bring in and sell these Foster's Veg Boxes. And Anne says, I can't do it. I've got to go. Now, <laughs> how are we going to run this business if I keep having one of the partners disinterested? and not seeing the potential of this. With Anne gone, it's down to owner Debs, me and Jen to sell the idea to Hoylake. I'm praying for my sake we get a good reaction. OK. We'll start in these streets. The most important thing is that you talk them through the reason why you've done this, how convenient it is. So, quite honestly, say to them, you know what? This will keep our local shop open. Do you want to support your local shop? You know, that I think that's really important to people. Hello. Hello. We at Foster's yeah. um, are coming up with an idea, which will be uh, a veg box. This is an eight-pound box yes. with all your basics in. We're local yeah. and we are cheaper than your two convenience stores. The most important thing is quality, really, you know. Yeah. Would you like to support your local independent shop? 
It depends on the price. OK. What would, that, you, what would you pay for that box? £10. Well done. Do £8 pound to you. Yes. Blow well, it I'll pop in and see you about it. Oh, well, brilliant. Number really... on the bottom. Yeah. Well, I'd, I would give it a try, definitely. Oh, I'd be really interested. You. you might as well have the custom then. Can we sign you up, Paul? You can sign us up. Perfect. Course. Would you take a box next week or this week? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did, I, I perfect. Was, we're delivering in your street next Thursday. And can we sign you up for next week for your first delivery? Jane, get the name out. That woman said it was a brilliant idea. Right. Right? Yeah. Don't look so depressed. No, come on. Give this me a break. <laughs> Give Miss me Mary. a break. <laughs> right, that one across the road. And if you don't start sounding positive, <laughs> you're going in the veg box. <laughs> gonna... You won't. You're only down road. I'll pop in. That road? Well, we deliver this for free. <laughs> you deliver it Save your legs. I'll oh, save my legs. I need the exercise. Oh, no, but no I'll take an order. Time. Yeah, let's have a look at you this. Get... Yeah. Do I know what I'm getting from week to week? Because I quite actually, it's quite nice to not know what you're I getting. Know. Yeah. I'm going to give yeah. you a hug <laughs> because <laughs> you are music to my ears. I've been telling these two. Isn't there something lovely about when you turn up on the seasonal vegetables you, in there and you don't know what it's? You don't be? know what it is, so you've got, to, you've got to use it. You've got to think what you're going to cook yeah. each night. You yeah. can plan it. Yeah. So you win. Mary. So it would be the same price. You win. The same price, but you know But it will still. We've done 40, 50 minutes max, and we've got how many people signed Six. up? Six. Six. That's 60, 70 quid in the till, guaranteed money that you know you're going to make next week. That helps you sleep at night. Do you know what I mean? I know I'm going to make that amount of money. Mm. Yeah, you're right. And that's just starting. That helps you plan your business. All I need now for next week is somebody to be in the shop so I that'll can be do the delivery. And that'll be you. Well done, girls. Get in the van. Who's Am I in the back again? Oh, no, all in the front. <laughs> you got to squeeze in with your sister, like you did when you were little. In oh, she can get in the, middle. the same bed together. I'm thrilled with today. I think Debbie and Jen have been won over, but it's Anne I have to worry about. Despite Debbie's part-time posty job, she's putting in the extra hours the business needs. But Anne's failure to rearrange her part-time care work, as promised, was not a good sign. If she's not committed, I think it will make life impossible for Debs. So I've asked the three sisters to meet me at Jen's house. Oh, hello, Mary! Hi, ladies! Hi, Mary! What single thing would improve for you your daily working at the moment, Jen? Another, another person in the shop. OK. We're starting these new ideas. Bang! You know, we're going to be launching the shop in a couple of weeks, our new business. Mm. And you've got to be ready. No, I told you I'm going to give up she's my going to, she's going to... Thursday, Friday of what I do right. to be in the shop. So, so that would put you into the shops, on, into the shop with Jen how many days? Three. Three out of five. Three of the, the heavy days. Three out of six? Yes. Three out of six. Three out of six. How many do you do, Jen? Four. Four. You, why can't you make it four out of six? What is more important, to Anne? Your business with your sister? or but Even is... to give up work, I have to give notice. I can't just go in and well, say, um, bye. How long it's have we been Jen. asking you to do it? It's a... It doesn't matter how long you've been asking. I'm telling you now know, what it I'm is. I've given you time. I've told you now, I'm giving it up. End of. I'm giving it up. So you've got to give a month's notice. If I give up work fully, I can't just go in tomorrow and say, that's it, thanks very much. You have to give notice. I know. Well, couldn't you have done it, like, months ago? No, months I didn't ago. do it months ago. That's the thing, the issue. Didn't do it months ago. Today I, I is today. Do you know what? I'm sick of looking like a bloody villain on these You're sodding not, cameras. Tan. You're not. We can work this through. It's not a problem. She's going to start right, now. Four weeks' time. Oh, no. Jesus! <laughs> what, you know, I am now the manager of this. Sit down, Anne. Piss off. Oi! Anne, Anne, come on. It can be sorted. This isn't difficult. You've just got to deal with it head on. Mm. Well, I went in thinking, let's sort out the, how they work together. And I've ended up with, you know, them nearly killing each other, this family battle. I mean, I've noticed that Anne is tough. You know, she's hard work, she's not been motivated, she's not been interested in the stuff that I've been doing. And she's lazy. She's lazy. 
and they've had enough. The next day, and time to put the Anne issue to rest once and for all. Following on from our discussions last night, which aren't going to be shoved under the carpet, we need to work out hours and support. Jen, can I have you back here? Deb, you are leading this and managing this. I'm okay. managing. I know, give you energy. We're not going to have a, a, a slanging match. We're going to get this sorted. Are we all agreed on that? Anne? Yeah. Jen? With the emphasis on deliveries, there needs to be two people in the shop. To make it work, Anne needs to stick to her promise. I'm giving up Thursday, Friday, all days, so I can open them shops them days. You said you'd do it before and you haven't, so that the, I don't want this, I don't want to find out a month down the line you're not doing it. So you're going to give me that commitment? I've told you I'm giving up. Yep. End of. Okay. If it takes me two weeks, three weeks, I'm giving up. Got it? Right, we got it. Let's go forward then. If the three sisters actually start working together, there's a chance that this 115-year-old business could stage a comeback. The hardest bit of all now would be actually now putting the hours in and making sure everyone is putting the hours in, because that's down to me now. I have to get together and sort it all out between the three of us. Every glass of um, creme de month. Three sisters are finally embracing 21st century retailing. Now they need a shop refit and a new branding to go with it. So I've brought them to my London office to get them behind my vision. I feel it's important to keep the Foster's name and the, the generation that it's been through. It's been through, what, four, five? Of yeah. different fathers, fathers. So. It'd be a shame not to let everyone know how long it has been going. Yeah. I think that's a must. There they are, my ladies. <laughs> hey, how are you? Good. Do you like my fr fruit and veg display? Yes. Do you think I've done well? It's not bad. This is Amos, who's worked with me on some ideas for your shop. So, when any business has a vision, right, any business, they always say, this is what we're going to stand for. Now, I've put three words here, which is going to be your vision, OK? Local, fresh, less. Local you are going to find local produce. Fresh. That means for you in terms of buying, Anne, you're going to go out and you're going to buy daily. Yes. Yeah? And that point of difference also is less. You are going to ask them to buy less. You're not going to ask them to bulk up for the week. You're going to say, buy less, but buy fresh. You're also going to charge less where you can. And in most instances, you can. How does our shop look? This is the feel that we want, right? You look at that and you want to eat from here, you want to buy from here. You need to tell them where stuff was sourced, what they can do with it. Spot on. Spot on. OK. Now, Amos is going to take you through now. How are your layouts going to be? <gasps> <gasps> Look, Amos, to give you a nice time, I'll sit down. So they're really sort of giving you this traditional grocers, but it's contemporary with a contemporary twist. The design pairs back the tacky display areas, so there's more space for customers to shop. Most importantly, there's an open area at the back where they can put together their delivery boxes. The rest is up to you lot doing a really beautiful yeah. display yeah. And, and being proud about the produce you get and being local. All going well so far. Now they just need to approve the branding. I genuinely think that we need to change the name. Oh, no. Do you know, I knew that bomber was coming. No. What was you thinking of change it for? Before we put poo poo the idea, what was you thinking about? Oh. Three sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Three sisters. No. I'm not making a decision now. Do you know what? I'm going to leave you. I'm going to leave you to talk about this amongst yourselves. No, it won't just take just today. But I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Gonna... Well, here. Do you know what though, Anne? I haven't got that long. I'm going to leave you for two seconds. Well, we'd all sat and said, no, there's no way we're going to thing it. And now, straight away, I know. you're changing. I know, but do you know why? Because I just think she's put it across in a way that I think she's right. I think, I think we should give it a go on. If it makes that till ring faster. Normally, I wouldn't do this. 
The Fosters one actually has a great heritage, but you know what? It's totally irrelevant to those women today. Get in here now. Well, actually, you know what? When I look at you three, it should be the three witches, as in Macbeth. Oh, Mary. Oh. <laughs> what do you think, ladies? What's your decision? I think we've... Go on, then, I Jen. I think we've swayed her. Come on, you. This is... I think we've swayed her. Yes. Reluctantly, I thought... <laughs> You've got to make it happen. I'm so glad it was yes, because I think Three Sisters is such a strong brand idea and one I think people will never forget. We're off to a studio in London's trendy East End for a photo shoot that's going to require a lot of veg and a lot of nerve. To realise my concept, I've assembled a crack team. Photographer Josh turned ordinary women into superstars for Dove's Real Beauty campaign, while stylist Dawn has worked for everyone from Vogue to GQ. Oh, there's our fruit and veg. <laughs> How good does that look? Come on, ladies. <laughs> How are we going to take the picture of the fruit and veg, Deb? You're going to dress it and make it... Not on us. No. Perfect. Yes. We're going to wear fruit and veg. Yes. <laughs> you are having me on. You're going to look like beautiful earth goddesses. Not like the calendar girls. No, not like the calendar <laughs> yeah. girls. We're just going to pare what you're wearing down and replace it with fruit and veg. No, no. don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see who's been going for this, can you? <laughs> Your melons will be completely covered, I promise, at all times. Oh, so my husband's crazy. Mortified, I'm telling you now. I can't believe you're doing this. I need to convince Debbie this will not jeopardise her marriage. You've got to trust me that we'll do this tastefully, all right? OK? What, what, what's your big issues? What's it going to look like, then, when it's on the picture? I know you're worried about what your husband might think, but this is your business and this is you. In the driving seat here, Deb, honestly, I really believe that. I, I can see myself in a divorce court over this, I really can. This is about you now, and you making profitable the business that you've invested in. I want to use strong images of the women to promote the business. <laughs> okay. Styled. Oh, yeah. Now you are going to play this up and you are going to behave and we are going to sell this, right? Mm. They're going to come in and say, what was on her breasts? <laughs> you look, can I have a looking slightly away as if she's dreaming? You know, that's, that looks great. She's got such a great face. Smile. Fantastic. <laughs> what's the matter? Just... Now I've got another worried sister on my hands. Come here, what's the matter? You all right? What is it? What's the matter? Oh, ow, you're not. Well, you're not, you're not, you're not. You, well, you're not, and I'm not going to do this. It's going to make you look beautiful. It's not. You're beautiful. You know you're a good-looking woman. Look, you've never been so dressed up, for Christ's sake. <laughs> How fab does she look? Would you tell her, sister? <laughs> I like it. Lovely, lovely. One, two, three. Fantastic, fantastic, thank you. Thank you, thank you, it's brilliant. I've given them their, their, their brand, I've given them their brand image, I've given them their point of difference, I've given them their shop design. Now they've got to deliver the right buy and the right product and the right service to that consumer. That's down to them now, that's the next big leap. The sisters head back to Hoylake to get ready for the relaunch. With days to go, the shop has had to close for the refit. But Foster's is still trading after Debbie used her newfound initiative to blag an empty store. Thinking on my feet. That was all. It was just, just a thought popped in my head. Two more. Yeah. They're increasing their buy from a local producer and even getting him to grow especially for them next year. Yeah, yeah. both. Yeah. Carrots. Yeah. Carrots. Yeah. 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 And I've set them a target of 50 delivery customers by the relaunch. So we've had probably six people come in last week to inquire about the boxes. I think about four of them have taken us on, so we'll be hitting the 30 probably by next week. So they've still a way to go. But soon enough, I'm back in Hoylake to see if Deb and Anne have created a business that's all about fresh, local produce and home deliveries. 
After weeks of trials and tribulations, it's time for the relaunch of the Three Sisters Greengrocers. Yeah, all right. Thumbs up. Have they done enough to tempt the locals from their beloved supermarkets? I'm actually unsure what to expect, you know? I'm, I've, I feel that the shop will look great physically, but I'm not sure, you know, whether they'll have delivered all the things that I've asked of them. It's, you know, it's been quite a struggle getting them to understand, you know, what great specialist retailing is. So I'm a bit, um, I'm a bit hesitant. How they do today will give me a strong indication of what the future holds. <laughs> There's the girls. Look at this, though. I mean, how? Fantastic. Does this look? Look at the little logo on the side, the confidence of saying, here's a brand that understands green grocery, you know? I would buy from here. In fact, I would so love my local green grocers to look like this. How good does this feel? How does it feel? Very good. Huh? Rustic, confident, but also very modern. The shop has finally moved into the 21st century. Before, it was gloomy, dated and sparsely stocked. Now, it feels bright, modern and full of produce that's distinct from the supermarket. This feels like a really professional, with great taste level. You know, really, don't you look at this and think, wow. I feel excited looking around, it feels fantastic. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> Do you love it? Like oh, it's sure. more you can add to it. feel like it's it? my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that feels fantastic as well. If that makes you feel like that, you know the customer's going to feel like that, yeah. Jen. You know, oh, I love being in here. Although, I've noticed there's one thing missing. OK, you three, turn around. <laughs> turn away. OK, ladies, you can turn around now. Oh. <laughs> Actually, they are good, right? Oh. Get up. Jesus, Took 20 years off you. <laughs> <laughs> Took 30 off you, Jen. <laughs> oh, look at you. And you didn't think you'd look fabulous at all. Do you remember mm. you were crying? A, a clean lips there. <laughs> you got that in, didn't you? <laughs> I couldn't help but get that cleavage in. Blimey. Imagine how much Listen, that would have... When you come next time with your bike, you can park it there. <laughs> Look at her. Looks like the angel, doesn't she? I, I am actually an angel inside. No, I know. But the store is only half of the business. Before we open to the public, I join Anne as she takes the battle for convenience to the streets with her veg box deliveries. 17. Yeah. 17. yeah. Oh, she's in. <laughs> oh, great. There you go. How many times have we delivered to this one? It's about three. Brilliant. Hiya! Hiya! <laughs> How's it been going? Is it good? Yeah, it's fab. Do really you like good? it? Yeah. Really good quality produce. We've delivered to the full song. Yes, we've hey, delivered Hey, hello. Hi, your veg box. <laughs> yes, thank you. It is good, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, delivered to your door so oh, no, fresh. It's brilliant. And local. <laughs> All right, I'll see you next week. Yeah, okay, All right, thank bye. you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Take care. Bye. The boxes are a hit, but have the sisters pushed it hard enough to meet my target of 50 orders? Right. How many have you got? How many on your list now? Probably got 30-odd, late 30s. I expected 50 easily that you'd have by now. I mean, it's been weeks that I've been here. Yeah. It's two couple of weeks, and I got six in an hour. So even if, even if we said six in a day, you know, in two weeks... We must have late 30s. This is, this is easy, easy money for you because mm. you can plan your business. Any spare minute you've got, up and down these streets yeah. and knock on the doors. Will you promise me that? I, I, it's my money as well. I will be out. Definitely. So, there's more work to do on the deliveries. But right now, it's time to find out what the locals make of their new revamped green grocery store. <laughs> Come on, ladies, anyone want a drink? Anyone like a drink? Thank you. So all the lettuces and things in the corner, fresh that day. He's picked them about half an hour before he brings them to us. Hey, anybody wants to be served? Queue up over there. 
Just a few weeks ago, this place was limping along without much of a future. So sorry about to wait. That's right. It's absolutely great. Fantastic. Made a heck of a difference. I should come again. <laughs> no doubt. Sort of better ambiance as well. As a, as more, of a, more of a feeling of, of wanting to be in the place rather than wanting to be out of it, <laughs> like it was before. Hello. Who's next? On an average day, the shop used to take just £200. In the few hours since opening, they've already doubled that. The trick now is to win over these customers permanently. It looks absolutely fantastic. It was just somewhere, wasn't it, just to pop in to get a few bits, but now it's just really, really nice and they're doing much sort of more different types of vegetables. Without being defensive, yeah, it yeah, was yeah, really yeah. dull and boring. It was, wasn't it? And, yeah. and it, it now it's like really fresh and it looks great. Yeah, it really does. Oh, I'm glad it works. I'm glad so we'll see lots more of you. Feels really pleased that we've delivered this. You know, they've wanted this. Actually, the expectation has been, thank God. And that's really fantastic for them. These people want this to work. They want to shop here now. This feels like a big success. I wonder what the manager thinks. That is a busy shop. Is that just? How does that feel? Chaotic, how to be honest. Just, I guess it's hard to cope with. If it's like that every day, I'm going to end up. You're going to end up? I'm going to end up in a villa in Spain. <laughs> you're going to end up in a villa in Spain and you're going to end up giving up your posty job. Oh, God, gotcha. yeah. I'd have to. I would have to. I think we've got a really good business model here, Deb. I really yeah. do. This it is. is just the beginning now. It is. Yeah. And you know what the thing is that you've got on your side is the customers. Yeah. People want this to work. They do want, they do want this. We never yeah. realised how, how many, you know, that the people are out there. Like you say, they just wanted this in they place. They want it. They want they did. it. The foundations are in place, but the sisters can't afford to become complacent. You've got the business. Mm -hmm. You need to give it the commitment, OK? Mm -hmm. I want this to be here in a year, two years, three years. Yeah? yeah. Are you coming back? <laughs> <laughs> I am coming back. <laughs> and I'll be watching you. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Thank you. And you're a lovely woman. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mary. Good luck, three sisters. Bye. There you go. Bye. It's a great shop. I really, really believe that that is best in class, independent greengrocer. And it's not just me, it's the customers. Everyone's come in and said, we love this, we want this. We want this kind of shopping. Now it's down to them. Yes, on the back there. Oh, it's just a constant go around all the time now. People are just people just love the shop. They love it. Hectic. Very good. Buzzing is the word. The sisters have stepped up to the challenge. And guess what? Even Anne's putting in the hours. I've decided now to give up most of my part-time work to work in the shop because it's so busy now. It's just you just can't cope. Is it hard work being successful? Yes, it is, but not in a horrible way, in a good way. Instead of taking a 1,000 a week, the shop now pulls in £1,700. Plus, their 40 veg boxes brings in another £400. Every day somebody's coming here, can we, do, can we have an order? Taking two this morning. In fact, the shop is doing so well that Debs has been able to quit as a postie. Future's looking good. Mm. She's not very good. Yeah, I'm my own boss now. I'm a green grocer. <laughs> Full time. Catch up with the series so far on BBC iPlayer. On Newsnight tonight, how many more British soldiers may have to lay down their lives in Afghanistan? How do you decide what's fair to cut in tomorrow's budget?